missing someone? Is Angel yeah, supposed uh, to be missing? Mr. Rodriguez. Oh, here he is. We have game one winner, Miami. Miami will play the winner of the Iowa Villanova game on March 24th at the South Regional in Louisville. We're joined now by Miami student athletes, Sheldon McClellan, Davon Reed, and Angel Rodriguez, along with head coach Jim Laranega. And Coach Laranega, would you please begin by making an opening statement? Well, uh, coming into the game, we have a great deal of respect for uh, Greg Marshall and his program at Wichita State. They're a tremendous defensive team. And we challenged our guys to play uh, great defense today. We, we are very, very capable. And uh, I thought uh, the way we played defense to start the game was unbelievable. Uh, it got us off to a great start. Uh, but of course, they are a terrific team, and they made a great run at us. They eventually took the lead, but these guys have great heart, and they really pulled together down the stretch, made some huge plays. Davon's block followed by the three-pointer. Um, Sheldon's uh, lob dunk from Angel on the dead run, uh, and then Angel's three-pointer and the, and the free throws he made down the stretch, just a, a tremendous uh, team effort. Um, but I expect an awful lot from these guys. They're very smart and dedicated student athletes. Angel and Sheldon have already graduated from college. Davon's uh, a superior student and on our dean's list. So uh, they're not only great athletes, but they're very, very smart individuals. We'll now have questions for the student athletes only. And please identify yourself and your media organization when asking a question. In the back. Uh, Peter Gobis from the Attleboro, Massachusetts Sun Chronicle for Angel. Uh, you were in a zone there, just being fearless in the first half, taking the ball to them. Uh, why did that happen so much so in the first half? Um, I just think the scene, you know, um, it's a lot, a, lot of, a lot on the line. Um, as a team, we obviously everybody wants to advance and um, I just felt good. I, I told uh, Yvonne in the warm-ups, I was like, man, today I just feel different. And um, I had a really good, really good energy um, about the team, not about me. Um, and I just seemed to come out on fire. But, um, you know, throughout the game, I just, I feel like a lot of, a lot of the media is getting caught up on me. But there was a lot of big-time play that other guys made um, that are probably just going to go unnoticed because of my performance. Questions for the student athletes. Question right up, right up here. Michelle Kaufman from Miami Herald. Andrew, you touched on this yesterday, but uh, there was a lot of talk about Wichita State being um, under respected and with their seating and all that. Do you feel that the Miami basketball program is is um, not appreciated as much? Do you think? You think you're overlooked sometimes? Uh, you've been with us for uh, the whole year. I'm pretty sure you, you feel the same way as us. I think definitely they just, I think obviously they respect us, but they seem to find a, a flaw in our team um, no matter what. But the great thing about it is we've kept our composure and we just, we play for, for each other. We don't, as I said yesterday, we don't play to um, prove people wrong. We play to prove ourselves right. Questions right over here. Jake Fisher with Sports Illustrated. Angel, I believe you were on the bench redshirting the last time this team was in the Sweet 16, <laughs> and you made the move, obviously, from Kansas State to get here. How does it feel to put, kind of put the team on the back and deliver this program into the Sweet 16? Um, I was actually in Kansas State. Well, yeah, I was home, um, disappointed after a loss against LaSalle um, while the team made it to a Sweet 16. but. Um, it, feel, it feels great to just advance to the, to the Sweet 16, but, you know, honestly, the way I'm feeling right now is just that gave me a lot more fuel than what, than what I had, and I know the team feels the same way to just achieve more. Um, it's a great accomplishment, but the motivation is even higher now. Questions for uh, Sheldon or uh, Devon? Over here. Uh, Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Uh, Sheldon, they take the lead. It's the only one that they had in the game. Uh, and I could see on the next possession, you started running before you hit half court. 
uh, and looking for that alley oop. Can you just tell me, you know, going through your mind there, did you realize how big a play that was in the game? Um, I think it was a very big play. Um, whenever Angel has the ball, I'm, I'm always relocating and trying to find space where I can get open and be effective um, as far as being aggressive. But uh, I mean, we've done those plays so many times. Um, it's not a surprise to, to, our, to our team and our program. So um, we're used to doing that um, on the court, but it's definitely a big play for us to get some momentum. Questions right in front. Michelle Kaufman from Miami Herald. Davon, can you talk about, uh, Coach talked a little about the defense at the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. Again, the Shockers are known for their defense and you guys really smothered them at the beginning. I think they missed 10 of their first 11 shots or something. Can you talk about the defensive mindset at the start of the game? <coughs> well, I think their defensive strength is punching teams in the mouth and, and getting off the great starts defensively. And tonight we wanted to come out and hit them in the mouth first and be scrappy with them and make sure we gave them um, a good defensive set. Mm -hmm. More questions for the student athletes. We have one in the in the back here. Austin Saban, Kane's warning. Um, Angel, can you talk about what was said, um, you know, in the huddle when they started to make the run? What pulled you guys back? <coughs> we just kept saying stay together, and I know it's a lot easier to say than to do it, but we really stay together. We know, you know, um, at this point in the season, nobody's go gonna go down without fighting. Um, I was a little surprised that they came back from, from 21 and they got the lead. But at the same time, I think it was great for our team to be tested um, in such a way at this point in the season. Because from now on, you know, it's going to be a dog fight no matter who we play. We have time for one more question. Anybody else? Thank you. You want to go, Bill? Sure. All right. Uh, Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Davon, uh, the exchange where you blocked the shot and then made the three at the other end, uh, that coming right after mm -hmm. Sheldon's alley -oop, how much could you feel on the floor the momentum change there in the game? Uh, those were just some big time plays. We had a lot of big time plays throughout the game. And like I said, when I shot the ball, it just, just felt good. And I just tried to be locked in and give something, a boost to my team. Big time play. Okay, thank you. We will now uh, dismiss the student athletes back to the locker room, and we'll hold on to Coach uh, Laranega here. Good job, guys. We will now open up to questions for Coach Laranega. Coach Jake Fisher with Sports Illustrated. Um, Angel obviously came out on fire. How big of a, of a lift is that from the sideline? Just watching him, pretty much anything he puts up goes in. Well. I told uh, the TV audience that uh, they should rename Dunkin' Donuts Center the Angel Rodriguez Park. He just owned the place. He was so focused, so confident, right from the very beginning of the game. He did it at the defensive end of the floor. He did it at the offensive end of the floor. He did it with his scoring. He did it with his passing. He just had one of those games where he was totally locked in, very focused on doing what we needed done. Questions, Bill? Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Coach, this is obviously a special place for you. It, it's where you played your college ball. Uh, how nice is it going to be to leave here with another great memory and, and on the way to the Sweet 16? Yeah, well, I, I have a lot of fond memories of playing at Providence College. Uh, the other day, one of our Providence College fans gave me my, my little trading card with my picture from 1969, and it had my stats on the back. And uh, one of my coaches took it from me and showed the players. And they said, man, coach, you shot a lot. <laughs> I said, I only shot when I had the ball. So it, I, go, I go back to, I have such good friends and great memories of Vic Colucci and, and Junior Farrow and Ernie DiGregorio, Marvin Barnes and those guys. Uh, it, it's just uh, great to come back here. We practice on the Mullaney court. I played for both Joe Mullaney and Dave Gavitt. And, uh, when I, when, I, when I think about my college experience, it really has led, my high school and college experience led to my coaching career. And Dave Gavitt helped me get my, my first coaching job where I never coached. And that was Mount St. Charles in Woonsocket, Rhode Island. They recommended me and I got the job, but then Davidson 
college called and offered me assistant coaching job, Terry Holland. I ended up starting my college coaching career at 21 years old. Questions for Coach? Uh, right, Michelle, right in front. Michelle Kaufman, I'm Harold. Coach, uh, you talked before about Andrew. Can you talk about his heart? Just, I mean, you've seen him do some incredible things. Does he still surprise you sometimes? H how does he do what he does, you think? I have no idea. You know, he's the smallest guy on the court most nights. Um, he has great confidence in himself. Um, and when he's focused, he has the ability to play at a very, very high level. Um, his, his, his biggest challenge is he needs competition. When the competition is at its highest, he's at his best. And he, he's not at his best when we're playing someone that's not very good or, or he doesn't have respect for. But obviously today, playing against Van Fleet and, and Ron Baker, a backcourt that may be by some experts considered the best backcourt in America, he and Sheldon were very locked in uh, to compete at the highest level, and they did. A question over here. Chuck Culpepper from the Washington Post. Uh, the thing you said yesterday about uh, Rotella and clapping for the mistake is when a 21-point lead is gone, is that, that tenor especially useful at that point? And the second part, um, some of your players said the tech they found the technical helpful, and I wonder if you uh, found it helpful. Well, uh, the first thing I would tell you is, is I don't think coaches should get technical fouls. I, I believe you should have poise and show your team that you're cool, calm, and collected on the sideline. So in the five years I've been at the University of Miami, that's only my second technical foul. But the way we were playing to start the second half. We had careless turnovers. We were very tentative, very unlike the way we played to start the game. And as they began to whittle down the lead, instead of getting tougher minded and fighting harder, we tended to let up. So I wanted to let the players know, listen, we need to fight right now. And I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to let the referees know that, that I'm fighting on the sideline. So. After the technical foul, I think it snapped our guys out of the doldrums and got them aggressive again, which uh, I'd, I'd have to say was good timing. You know, we were fortunate that the players responded that way. More questions for Coach. Bill. Uh, Bill Koch for the Providence Journal. Coach, just jumping off that, uh, the toughness that your players showed there to lose the lead and then score the next six points, uh, how much does that speak to, to their character? Well, as I said, the, these guys have big hearts. They're smart. You know, they understand what needs to be done. They always understand the game plan. They understand the strengths and weaknesses of the opponent and what we're trying to exploit versus no matter who we play. We had a slow adjustment in the first half when they went to the zone and, and then slow adjustment in the second half when they picked up the pressure. But they, they, they didn't panic. <laughs> you asked what what uh, we said at, at the uh, timeouts, and Sheldon McClellan just kept, I, I will say, in a loud, very demonstrative voice, we're not losing this game. We're not losing this game. Pick it up. Let's play. Come on, go after these guys. We're not losing this game. And the message was loud and clear to everybody that, hey, this is a, a great game. You know, the fans were going wild at that time, and we needed to dig down and, and, and find another – gear to go to. And when Angel threw that lob pass, I think we were one for five or one for seven on lobs. The first lob we actually scored on, the ball hit the backboard, hit Sheldon's hand and went in. It was like an accident. The, the last one, Sheldon threw down so hard it hit the back rim and went out. One of them was supposed to be just a catch and finish. Kamari Murphy tried to reverse it. But you're always going to have miscues. You, you're going to always make mistakes. And the thing about it, you got to clap for the mistakes and move on to the next play. Question in the back. Yeah, Jim. Peter Govis from the Alabama, Massachusetts Sun Chronicle. Uh, why is it in the NCAA term there's always some six-foot white guard, Puerto Rican kid, <laughs> who is <laughs> understated, uh, overlooked, and he makes the big plays? Ernie DiGregorio, guys like that. Yeah, well, I played with Ernie DiGregorio. 
and I don't think anybody ever overlooked him once he got on uh, got to college. He was under recruited because he he played in in a a town uh, Providence North Providence where you don't get a lot of exposure. And back then there a lot of schools were only recruiting locally. You know the the, the Philly schools were recruiting Philly kids and South Jersey kids. Uh, the schools in New York were recruiting all New Yorkers. So it just turned out great for Providence College that they were able to get Ernie DiGregorio followed by Marvin Barnes, not only the two of the best players in the state of Rhode Island's history, but just a couple of years apart. So they got a chance one year apart, actually. Um, they got to play together for uh, two solid seasons. So, um, But I, I think it's very natural for um, really big, talented athletes to get a lot of attention and for the smaller, uh, less athletic, and I, I don't mean Angel's not a good athlete, it's just he's smaller. And uh, everybody thinks basketball's a big man game where I tend to think it's a, a game of skill. You know, can you dribble, pass, and shoot better than the other guy? Defend and rebound, by the way, too. Uh, one more question, last question. Yeah, it's Chuck Culpepper from the Washington Post. Uh, how worried were you when the lead went away? Well, I've been doing this a very long time. I've seen everything. I've had a team that was up 26 points with 10 minutes to go and lose. I've had a team that was down 24 points with eight minutes to go, and my team scored 25 consecutive, and we won. So nothing surprises me. Um, you're playing in the NCAA tournament against quality teams, quality coaches, everybody is well prepared, and it really comes down to making really big plays down, down the stretch. But those big plays are normally the simplest, making a free throw, making an open three, taking away a drive, blocking a shot. It's all about the fundamentals, and today we executed the, in the last five minutes really well. Okay, thank you. Thanks, everybody.